Hi there, I'm Gordon Harris and welcome to another episode of Destination Ipswich. Today we're back at Crane Beach, which is where we started a few months ago. Uh, that time we went to the dunes. Today we're going to go up to uh, Steep Hill and over to the, uh, Fox Creek. Um, go around the other way. There's some nice trails there that most people probably never tried. So you can see them on the map here. Uh, here is the, the dune trails that we did before. We're right there and we're going to go down to the beach and go left. Uh, take a little walk along the beach and then we'll head up the hill. Uh, I see one sunbather on the beach and wow, the white caps are really amazing. They're, they seem to be splashing against each other and throwing, throwing white mist up into the air. It's a great day to be at Cranes. So you see this um, red rope here. Well, there's a sign that tells us that this is blocked off with plovers. Uh, it's a rare bird and um, they lay their eggs right on the sand so uh, this is the time of year when they do and of course the gulls will come up and gulp them up but we certainly don't want people walking on them so we stay on this side of the red rope. This is the um, first two trails that head over towards Steep Hill, which is right there. Uh, we're not going to take this one. It goes through some small dunes. That one will take us more directly right up to the hill. Um, if you come to Crane Beach very often, you notice that all the sand is not the same color. So there's these different patterns of garnet. Uh, you see it right here. And sometimes it's, it's more red. Uh, this time of year it appears to be a little brown or gray. So where does that come from? Why is it sand all the same color? It um, apparently comes down the Merrimack River uh, from up in the, in the mountains. And um, so that's uh, this kind of a sand that, that washes off the rocks. It's swept down and then it comes down along, of course, Plum Island. It lands here at Crane Beach on top of the other sand. Look at these nice patterns here. The beach is just art, isn't it? <laughs> Behind us, that's Steep Hill. Uh, it's a glacial drumlin, like all these hills around here for the most part. And this trail that we're going to head up will take us just around a little bit and then up the hill, up through the trees. It's got a nice bench up there, a place to sit, even if you don't want to go on a walk. When you get here, just beyond the bench, uh, if you want to go to, over to the castle and the Grand Allee, it's over there. What we're going to do is keep going this way. There's even a uh, sort of a porta potty there. Head on up the hill. Uh, now we're going to head up into the gnarly woods. Uh, I wanted to come here before the leaves got too full. Uh, one for the view and the other is, it's just a funny looking woods. All the trees are so twisty and gnarly. Come on, let's go see. The view up here is just spectacular. We're looking across at Plum Island. Uh, this sandbar that you see on the left uh, was, was known as Stage Island. It's not technically really an island. Sometimes it was also called Ipswich Bluffs. Um, if you go back to around 1900, there was a hotel there. As a matter of fact, there were hotels on Little Neck, uh, Grape Island, which is a little further out that way. Uh, and here, and people would take this uh, steamboat from the town wharf called the Carlotta. Uh, it was a great thing to do. In you know, early 1900s, people had uh, the first vehicles and they could, it was, the thing to do was, was go from, say, Boston, come to Ipswich, park your car there, your Model T or whatever, and uh, park it there at the, at, the beat, at the wharf and then get on the ship, the Carlotta, and they would do nighttime cruises. They would hit all the, uh, all the sweet spots, all the night spots. Uh, this was a popular stop here at uh, Ipswich Bluffs. And then they would go on up, up to Newberry where, where there was a big dance hall. People would dance until midnight or so. And then on the way back home, of course, it'd be a little cool on the water and everybody would cuddle up and they'd have a great time. 
Uh, also, we're looking at uh, the drumlin that's right on, right on the end there. That's what really anchors the end of the um, uh, Plum Island. Some beautiful white caps out there. Another thing I, I notice a lot when I'm out, out here at certain times is, is how the tides interact. So we have the Ipswich River flowing out and we have uh, the tides coming in. So if you look right in there, there's sort of a dirty spot in the water, kind of a brownish spot, and that's the confluence of the two different uh, patterns. You actually see waves moving out and waves coming in. That's the confluence of the Ipswich River and, um, and the ocean's waves coming in. And you know, there's a, there's a sandbar out there. That's where, that's what all those white caps are. They're on the sandbar that extends out. It's really an extension of Plum Island. And that's what made uh, Ipswich a really tough uh, town uh, for shipping. By the middle of the 19th century, uh, ships had gotten so large that they really couldn't navigate uh, around all of those, all of that um, sand, the sandbars. A lot of ships were lost out there. We even had a lighthouse. Uh, at one time. But today it's a beautiful place to be and now we've gone over a uh, steep hill and we're we're back down uh, to the entrance on the far side. So this is a map that shows us where we are. There's a steep hill we came down. What we're going to do now is uh, take a narrow trail. Some interesting things in there. Um, they'll take us to the rose garden, the formal garden, and we'll get a glance at the, at the uh, castle. I think this Birch Tree did, uh, did its job and uh, finally fell during this heavy wind, probably. <laughs> Hello! And look at the flowers. The lower end of the estate before you get to Grand LA, you can see over there uh, where the clubhouse where Mr. Crane would meet with his friends and probably smoke and drink, and they even had a pool there. Um, sort of men's club over there. There's something that Mr. Crane liked to do when he would walk from there uh, with his friends. He would get to this rock. I'm going to show you what he did. So, Richard T. Crane, owner of the state, would bring his buddies over after they <laughs> probably been smoking and drinking a little bit. And uh, he had this rock uh, strategically placed here uh, on a perfect balance point. And uh, he would come over and he would push the rock open the gate and then we would close it. Now, sometimes it works, and sometimes it doesn't. So let's see, let's see if it's working today. I usually have to give it a, a little nudge the first time with a, with a stick. Here we go. So I did a little calculation on this. And I forget what I decided, but it's at least a ton. I think it was maybe even like a ton and a, ton and a half uh, piece of rock here. So uh, obviously after you've gone down the path you certainly want to close the gate and uh, by the way it's a lot easier to close and open. <laughs> and there you go. <laughs> so we're getting closer to uh, to the castle and uh, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Crane uh, had several gardens here. This is a wild garden right in front of us. Uh, what we're going to do first is we're just going to go take a left up and that's the formal garden. We'll come back down and see the rose garden. We could be in some other country here. There's certainly a, uh, an Asian influence on this overhang. We're going to go up these stairs here. See, the outside's taped off for the moment. I have uh, a couple of photos of uh, Florence Crane, uh, Mr. Crane's wife, with the children. And they're sitting on one of these benches. There's one on that side, and there's one here. The, uh, the gardens were designed uh, by uh, the Frederick Olmsted Company. Um, that's the same Olmsted that, uh, that the, 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 you know, the great work in Boston and around the country. Um, and then uh, Arthur Shercliffe was another architect who worked on, on the gardens here and did the Rose Garden that we're going to look at later on. Trustees of Reservations are doing a lot of work to preserve this. So, so you know, 
it was falling into ruins and you almost get the feeling that you're walking in an old Roman ruins here. Because if you look straight down through the gate where the two women are walking through right now, wonderful view looking down at the river and, and the marshes. We took a little detour to come up to the head of the Grand LA. This is where the summer concerts are, are held. Um, and this is the Crane Castle. Now there's a little story here. Um, Cornelius uh, Crane, uh, uh, Richard T. Crane rather, was the uh, heir, heir of, uh, of, the, uh, of his father's uh, uh, plumbing business, which you've probably seen crane sinks, crane toilets. Uh, they really put bathrooms in people's houses, you know, at the beginning of the 20th century. So they made a fortune. They were certainly ahead of the technological, technological curve at the time. Um, uh, like many men, uh, he didn't consult with his wife before he decided to build a castle here. So uh, he wanted it to be a surprise for her. He bought the property uh, and he had the castle built. And she came and she said, I hate it. Uh, it was a different design to this. It was at least this big. Um, we have some photos of that castle. And he said, just give me, a, give me 10 years. And so 10 years went by and she said, tear it down. And so they did. They, they took down the, the, the castle that was here and they built this, uh, this beautiful castle uh, in the Tudor style, which is, uh, we're going back to uh, post-Elizabethan days. This is what she wanted. And unfortunately for uh, Mr. Crane, he, I think he only lived a few years after that uh, here. Uh, she survived him for quite a while, Florence Crane, uh, and began uh, over time deeding the, the uh, property of uh, the beach and certain parts of the property um, uh, to the town. And, uh, and then another piece was deeded to the trustees of reservations. Uh, finally, Mimi Crane uh, uh, f finished the deeding almost all of the property um, except the little piece down at the foot of Steep Hill. And now that, I think, is, is also owned by, is part of a land trust. Uh, so this is a great place to come in the summer to, to enjoy. And, uh, of course, we're not going inside. You can buy tickets at the main gate uh, and see the inside, and it's certainly worth the visit. Also, when you're looking across, just amazing view when we're looking across here. Uh, those are the dunes that we visited in our first episode. And then looking across, that's called Ipswich Bay. Uh, across the way there, um, we're looking at Cape Ann. Now, uh, Gloucester would be over to the right. Lakeville is there. Rockport is down at the end. And you can see, you can just barely see the, uh, the, uh, uh, the granite cliffs where a lot of, probably a lot of the granite uh, came from for, that was used here. Of course, there's all the wonderful statues. And uh, a few years ago, the, uh, the older trees that were here, they were cut down by the trustees and they planted uh, new evergreens and they look marvelous now. It's a perfect day to be here. the Rose Garden uh, back, uh, I think, um, received the gold medal from the Massachusetts Horticultural Society in 1929. Now, it pretty much fell into ruins, uh, but the trustees have, have restored uh, the timbers on top of the, the concrete posts. Uh, they've uh, restored, the, restored the pool, and look at all the tulips coming up. It's an amazing place. We just came down from the Rose Garden and uh, just a short distance down that little hill, you get a choice of which way you want to go. If you don't want to walk four miles, which I think we're probably going to do today, uh, you can take a right here. And earlier on in our footage, um, I pointed out a trail 
that would take you oh, over to Fox Creek. And this is it. This will take you right back up to the bottom of Steep Hill. But what we're going to do today is go over and take a look at Fox Creek. Here. This is the beginning of the Cedar Point Trail. Now, if you were to go continue up the hill, winding to the left, you would come to that parking lot that's at the bottom of uh, the Crane Estate, where you know where the old farm buildings are. And uh, but we're going to take a right here. This is called the Cedar Point Trail. Uh, looking off in the distance is Fox Creek. Um, some of the other hills of Ipswich. There was another bridge here, but uh, it got washed away. It's right over there, sitting in the marsh. Um, we're about halfway down Cedar Point Trail. Uh, behind me is the, is the uh, bridge that used to go over that ditch, and it got picked up in one of those uh, big storms. Uh, the hill over here is called Tilton Hill, and uh, Tilton's an old family name in Ipswich. Um, it's not on any of the roads that we might be driving on because uh, it, it's it, uh, Fox Creek Road takes you to that and it's a private driveway. Well, in our first episode, we, we were in the, uh, the dunes, five miles of dune trails. Um, and uh, there's dunes on this side as well. So we're starting to go back in, into the dune area. Now, a couple of the plants that I, sh that I pointed out uh, in that first episode were Hudsonia. Hudsonia is this plant here. It's very brown during the winter. It has roots that go down about three feet deep and you can see it's starting to turn green. So by, I'm sure within a, a month or two, uh, when you look across here, you're gonna see a lot of green as, uh, instead of the brown. Now the other thing uh, that I mentioned was Cladonia and here's just a little piece of it here. There's lots of it back behind. Um, and and that, is, that, is not a, that is not plant, that is, uh, a uh, fungus and uh, it was there was a creek here but it was not a, always a canal um, it was talked about even in the 17th century as a way to to connect um, to, to to make a waterway that would that would go from the Ipswich River uh, over to Essex Bay uh, to ship uh, to ship lumber. We were already getting by the by the beginning of the 18th century. We were getting most of our lumber uh, for houses and especially for shipbuilding from the really nice virgin forest up in up in New Hampshire. So they would float the water, the uh, these logs down, and, but it was um, rather tricky to take them. Uh, uh, out around uh, Plum Island. It was much easier if they could go through here. So uh, I think it was about 1820 that uh, a group of investors dug this out. Now that's before before we had machinery. So it was probably all dug out by hand uh, and it was wider than it is today. They actually did use it commercially for a number of years uh, but it has of course somewhat gone back to the nature uh, it's still an intercoastal waterway, but at some points, some places, it's very, it's very narrow now. See, there's an island behind me. That's Treadwell's Island, um, and you know, it, it, really early in the seven, in the 1600s, it was called Perkins Island. Uh, Treadwell's today. It's been there are just a few uh, home lots on it. There are there are cottages. I don't think there's any any uh, electricity running out there. Um, nice place for people to that own those cottages to go out during the summer and they're very private. It's not a place um, where you're going to get invited to unless you have friends that already have, have a cottage there. And look, there's Little Neck. Steep hill on the left. And right in the middle of the view, there is, there is the Italian garden. Uh, over the right, came back down Cedar Point Trail. Behind us, we have Little Neck. 
we have Switch River in between us. Um, see the wind turbines over there? There is, over a little bit to the left, there is a, uh, there's a tower, that's a uh, communications tower is in Raleigh on Prospect Hill. And we swing around to the right here, we're looking across at Plum Island. It's a 360 degree panorama today. The little sign says you are here. And just to try to help out a little bit, we, we parked at the uh, Ipswich Residence parking lot. We went out to the beach, we walked along. Uh, we came up the Steep Hill Trail. Uh, went up on top of Grand, Steep Hill, past the Grand LA. Uh, then we were, uh, we stepped up to the Great House, the Rose Garden, Italian Garden. Came down Cedar Point Trail, down to by Fox Creek. And this is the Cedar Point Trail here. We've made it back to, to uh, Steep Hill Beach. We're put in by, um, I think, Mr. Richard T. Crane. Uh, I think what he's trying to do was uh, change, make the channel deeper to uh, the river, to prevent the river from wa you know, washing out the uh, shoreline here. Um, whether or not that was a good idea, I don't know. When it's really low tide and we're, we're still, I think the tide is still heading out because I see the river is slowing out. Um, there are these little pools in there and they, uh, all around the rocks, it's a nice place to, to go wading with little kids, bring them over here and wade in the pools. Just, you'll see the tide coming up and then you just head back up to the beach. So behind those seagulls there, you see a little piece of wood with some bolts sticking out. That's one of the few remnants of the Ada K. Damon, which um, got stuck on the sand, the sand here in the early 20th century and was, the wreck was, came, it kind of came and went. It would get buried by the sand and then um, in the last couple of decades, it was, it, the sand was washed out from underneath it and uh, what was it, two or three years ago, a storm came along uh, of all times, and I think it was August or September, uh, picked up the ADK Damon, the, 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 the whole hull was still here, and just broke it apart in pieces. So there's still a few odds and ends around, but not much. Maybe two thirds around Steep Hill Beach. Uh, Steep Hill is right here to my right, and there's a trail here uh, we passed the entrance to that trail. There was a gate, a uh, big metal gate there. So um, that's one way to come over from, from Crane Beach over to Steep Hill Beach. Uh, if you're parked up there, of course, if there's an event up there, it's easier, easy to come down this way. And this beach is really loved by its rich people. It's never as crowded uh, as, as, as Crane Beach. A lot of people come over their boats from maybe across from Little Neck or Great Neck and, they, and they'll be further down and spend the afternoon on the beach. But if you wanted to go back up to the hill, that's how you go up. It's a nice boardwalk up there. We're gonna keep going on around the, around the point. It's called Skull Rock. Uh, depending on which angle you're looking at it, it kind of looks like a human skull or to me, maybe more like a uh, a dog, a canine skull. And you gotta wonder why is there such a big rock here on Crane Beach? And the answer is there's a lot of rocks. We're at the foot of Steep Hill. Remember a little while ago, we were up, up at the top taking a look at the view. Now we're at the foot of it. And if you look in the bank, you can see that over the years it's washed away. Uh, it is the end of a drumlin, is the, the, uh, the steep side of the drumlin. It's filled with rocks and sand and gravel and dirt that were pushed along by the glacier maybe 50,000 years ago. Started backing away about 15 or 20,000 years ago. Um, this is literally the end of the world for the glacier. This and the, and the uh, Little Neck, uh, Great Neck, all, the, all these drumlins all around here. This is where the Great Wisconsin glaciation stopped began melting away, and when it did that, it dropped Skull Rock right here at Crane Beach. Well, we made it back to uh, where we started. We're on the boardwalk from the Ipswich uh, parking lot down to the beach. We went about four miles. It was a beautiful day, so, uh, kind of bookended by a rainy week before, and I think it's gonna be a rainy week after. 
uh, behind us, that's, the, that's Crane Castle. And, you know, we're just so fortunate to have the trustees of reservations uh, owning this and making it available to the public. If you travel to other parts of the country, the beaches um, have been, are lined with hotels and condos, and oftentimes the beach is off at, not even accessible unless you're, unless you're uh, the owner or staying at those properties. And here, we, we take it for granted that we have this amazing place that we can walk four or five miles in that direction. We can walk five or six miles through the dunes and miles and miles of beach, wonderful place. We really, really appreciate that the trustees do that. And the town of Ipswich, that they make parking free for Ipswich residents for $20 a year. You can't beat that deal. Oh yeah, don't forget, visit my website, historicipswich.org. I'm Gordon Harris, Ipswich Town Historian.